Let's take a look at a pretty common situation. We have a QML front end and some C++ code that we want to talk to on the back end. In front of you, we have a simple application that does absolutely nothing, but we need to integrate the front end and the back end together. This may seem like a pretty complex and daunting task, but we can do this in three simple steps. The first step is, well, we need to register a QML type. So let's open up our main file. Let's go ahead and include our file here. Now we need to actually register the type. So we're going to say QML register type. And we've got a bit of typing here. We want our stopwatch class and we need a name. That's the fully quantified name of this type. And let's give it a major version followed by a minor version. And let's give it an actual name. This is the name that we're going to use inside of QML. It does not necessarily have to match the name of the class. For our second step, we need to actually modify our C++ code just a little bit. What we need to do is add some properties. We need properties so that we can do property bindings inside QML. In here, you can see we have some private functions. We want to be able to use these inside of our QML code. Let's go ahead and let's make a Q property. Let's give it a type. And now we need to give it a name. So what this actually does is we have a type, we have a name, then we have a read and a write along with a notify. For the read, we're doing best, which as you can see down here, returns a double. For the write, we're doing set best. Set best just sets a double. And then notify is, well, a signal, best changed, right here. What this really says is we want a getter, a setter, and we want to be able to know when that property has changed. Let's go ahead and make another one. Perfect. Now we can set the best and the display and use property bindings inside of QML. The third and final step is to use the C++ code in QML as a QML object. Let's go back to our main and let's just grab this right here. Jump into our QML and we're going to import it. We're going to import it by the name plus the version. Now that it's imported, let's go ahead and use it. Now we have our QML object and we can simply use it in our code. Let's go ahead and start filling in our code. First thing we're going to do is stopwatch start. And then let's do stopwatch stop. This will obviously stop the stopwatch. Reset just simply resets the time. Now we need to set the goal or the best time. This is an interesting one because we're not calling a slot. We're actually calling that Q property we made earlier. So we're going to say best and we're going to say 3.0. What's really going on under the hood here is we're saying stopwatch.best equal 3.0. When we look at the stopwatch code, we see our Q property. We have our getter, our setter, and our notify. So QML is actually talking to this property on our setter, and then the notify is being emitted. Let's go ahead and set our display. And let's set our best time. We want to format this, so let's say number to a fixed position, and we're going to say two, and we want to read the best. There we go. To finish up our user interface, we just want to be able to toggle between slow mode and fast mode, and we're going to say stopwatch toggle the switch one dot checked. Let's go ahead and run this. Everything works as expected. Our QML is talking to our C++ and everything just works. It couldn't be any simpler than that.
If you're like me, you're hungry for more. Visit cute.io, click on resources, then go to development, tech talks, and tutorials. As you can see, we have got a ton of tutorials out there. Go ahead and visit today and let us know what you think. I'll see you there.